Hello everyone, I'm Maggie Liao from the Media Effects Lab of Penn State. I'm really glad to present the work on behalf of my co-authors, Dr. Shamsundar and Dr. Zhou Author today. Recommender system has never been more prevalent in our life than before. Therefore, how to explain the result and enhance users' understanding of and trust in the system become extremely crucial as these recommender systems tend to be more user-facing than popular. Traditionally, when we think about trust, we usually accurate trust with the actual performance of the system, particularly how to improve the algorithm and develop different advanced computational models to predict users' needs and preferences more accurately. However, recent studies start to show that ensuring good UX can be far more complicated, as users' evaluations are fairly subjective. So despite the difference in terms of the objective performances, we still do not know whether users have a general subjective tendency to trust one type of recommender system more than the others. In this study, we primarily investigate three of the most common approaches used by recommender system. So users usually become aware of these approaches when the recommender system provides explanations. So the first one is a demographic-based recommender system, which relies solely upon users' demographic profiles, age, gender, education, and many more. And users will usually see explanations like other users in your age group also enjoy this. And the second one is a collaborative filtering, which analyzes the correlations among similar users based on users' potential common interests or taste in products. It can express in terms of their past purchases, ratings, browsing histories, and etc. And users will usually see the explanations like other users with similar interests as you also enjoy this. And finally, it's a content-based filtering, which focuses primarily on one's in own indicated preferences and analyzes the correlation between users' preferred product characteristics with those of the new products. And users will usually see the explanations like, based on your past selections, you might be interested in this. Simple as they are, this explanation can have significant psychological implications among users due to the triggering of different cognitive heuristics or mental shortcuts. So compared to the other two approaches, collaborative filtering might lead to higher bandwagon perception or trigger the bandwagon heuristics. Namely, if others think something is good, then I should think so too, because it recommends based on a large group of users who share similar tastes and preferences with individual users. And content-based recommender system, on the other hand, might be able to give individuals a greater sense of personalization by tailoring products to feed one's specific needs. Therefore, it is more likely to trigger the identity heuristics. Namely, if something reflects my unique characteristics, it is better. And these heuristics could further lead to more positive evaluated outcomes. However, recommender systems do not always go as we plan it, especially in the initial stage of users' interaction with them, when the system knows relatively little about users and are most likely to make mistakes, what we call the co-star problems. So how will users react? And we could show some insights from the responsibility attribution literature. So in interpersonal communication, according to the attribution theory, human tends to hold a self-serving bias. Namely, we tend to think our own failures as being due to like aspects of the situation, including other people, where we tend to credit ourselves for the success we have. And we would like to investigate in our study if the same bias still holds true with humans' interaction with the recommender system as well. And more importantly, how users assign responsibility while interacting with different types of recommender system and how the responsibility further influences their trust in UX. So to answer all these questions, we conducted a two by three between subject on experiment among 226 participants from cloud research. And participants were randomly assigned to one of the six experimental conditions and instructed to interact with the corresponding prototype of one of the ostensibly different recommended system called movie taste that recommend movies to users. And these are the major dependent variables we investigated. We mimic the real-life recommender system, so after users landed on the home page, they also need to build a profile, and then they will receive the recommendations. To manipulate the system performance, we actually conduct a pilot test first to identify the best or the worst movie trailers from a large pool of movie trailers, and select these movies for our recommendations. The manipulation of RS type was embedded in the explanation that the system provided to users on the welcome page, the loading page, and result page, respectively. So for content based, they're going to see explanations like the movies are recommended based on your unique taste, and for collaborative, those are uh, recommended based on viewing actions of the like mining people, and then for demographics, it's recommended based on some demographic factors. 
So what we find is that, as we hypothesized, users tend to trust collaborative filtering more than content-based filtering due to the triggering of bandwagon heuristics. And also, as we hypothesized, content-based filtering is trusted more compared to the demographic filtering due to higher identity perceptions. And this result is uh, holds true regardless of how the system performs. The same result also applies to other dependent variables, as we described in our paper. We also find users tend to over-attribute responsibility to themselves when receiving good recommendations, while over-attributing responsibility to the system when they receive bad recommendations. In other words, the same self-serving bias still holds true between users' interaction with the recommender system as well. More interestingly, we find this bias is less salient when they interact with the demographic recommender system, because they would assign more responsibility to the system regardless of how the system performs. And responsibility attribution is also found to be a significant mediator, such that users will trust the collaborative filtering more than the content-based and demographics ones, especially when the system performs well, due to the lower attributed responsibility users assign to the system. In general, our study corroborates previous findings that users rely quite heavily on social endorsement cues when making decisions online. However, not all social information is trusted. The superficial ones, like demographics, age, and gender, is not sufficient for building users' trust. Instead, users might need social information that actually reflects others' collective tastes and preferences towards specific products. And we also find users' higher trust towards collaborative filtering is independent of the system performances. So in the past, researchers usually proposed that you know, we could leverage the demographic filtering to solve the cold start problems. However, what we find in our study is that although collaborative filtering might face a bigger cold start problem empirically or computationally, it can promote users' subjective trust in the system, even when the performance is not good. For content-based system, the key to gain users' trust with the system is the identity heuristics. So content-based system can leverage the positive effects of customization and individuation by including design elements that allow users to consciously engage in identity-related preference settings, like are you a sports fan, and accompany system recommendations with explicit appeal to their identity in the explanations, like as a sports fan, you will love this. Finally, responsibility attribution is found to be a significant mediator, which tells us that recommender system can be more upfront and transparent with users about the factors that might influence performance quality, especially in their in initial interaction with the system. But more importantly, we can also build in cues on the interface that visualize users' contribution to the outcome of the system at every stage of the interaction and emphasize the collaboration between users and the system to increase users' perceived credibility of the system. So we invite you to read further into our paper. If you have further questions, please feel free to email us. And thank you very much for listening to our presentation.